Hey everybody, my name is Maya Joy Kanaha and in today's video I'm going to speak about twin flames, body image, and how our feelings about our physical body, our physical vessel, how they can impact our pathway to union. So in this video I'll be talking about why body image is important, I'll be talking about how our perception of ourselves and our physical body, how it may or may not influence our twin flames perception of us. I'll also talk about my own experience for myself and my twin flame with our body image and how we've addressed that in our union. And then I'm going to speak about weight gain and whether or not it is actually a metaphysical issue in the modern day and age. And finally, we'll talk about whether or not it's necessary to love your body since loving your body is really kind of a big message right here and now. So the reason I made this video is because I've noticed that, you know, healing is spoken about a lot on the Twin Flame journey. It's relatively well understood that in order to come into union, we need to heal ourselves and our relationship with ourselves. But I actually don't hear that many people talking about healing the physical body. And in my own experience of coming into union with my Twin Flame, this was really, really important for both of us. So I I think sometimes when we may feel not ready to see our twin flame or not worthy of seeing them or we may be afraid of them in some way, we can sometimes manifest issues with our health, with weight gain, with body image as a way of keeping our twin flame away from us or as a way of justifying why we are not in union and sometimes healing those body image issues or coming to a place where we feel healthy and vibrant can often remove those blocks and open up the pathway to union. So why is having a healthy body image important? The number one reason I think this is really important for twin flames is because feeling good about our Our physical body is necessary for embodiment, which means if we don't feel good in our physical body, then it's going to be very, very difficult for us to actually have our soul be in our body. And a lot of people actually don't live in their physical bodies. A lot of people that feel uncomfortable in their physical bodies, they sort of hover around their body. And when you're doing that, your full vibrancy is not here. And your ability to manifest and use your gifts is really compromised. So in order to be grounded in our body, we have to live in our bodies. And in order to live in our bodies, most of us need to feel very, very comfortable in our physical bodies. So a lot of times when people are struggling with body image issues, they become ungrounded. And then from that place of ungroundedness, they may not feel capable of sustaining union or doing the healing, or they may not feel in touch with their intuition, etc. So I would say for my own self and for most people out there, the number one reason to start to feel better about your body and to put in the work necessary to feel good about your physical body is because when you do that, you can ground. And when you are grounded, that is when your intuition is the strongest. That is when your ability to manifest is the strongest. And that's when you can achieve physical union. If you're not in your physical body, you're not going to achieve physical union. (laughs) Another reason that body image is is really important to coming into union is because if we do not feel kindness, compassion towards our physical bodies and our physical vessels, oftentimes, whether consciously or subconsciously, we then feel unworthy of receiving love. And we put up like an energetic barrier that says, I'm not beautiful enough. Stay away from me. Stay away from me. Sometimes like extra weight, especially it can be a barrier that we use to protect ourselves from the outside world. And I don't know if any of you have ever had the experience of sort of feeling like really uncomfortable in your physical body at a particular time. And then maybe somebody like tries to hug you or maybe a a partner tries to be affectionate with you or something. And you almost like pull back like, oh no, like don't touch me. Like, 
I'm not worth it. And that can be a major, major issue when it comes to twin flames. It's not so much that your twin flame is going to find you repulsive. If you find yourself repulsive, that's not necessarily the case. But if you find yourself repulsive, you're not going to be able to receive the love from your twin flame. And therefore, you may not come into that place of closer intimacy because it's actually a really bad feeling. If you try to love somebody and you try to show somebody love and care and they kind of throw it back at you because they don't feel that they deserve it, that is that can be a very difficult experience and it can really be an experience that causes our twin flame to maybe feel that we're not able to be present with them at any given time. So that can have a major, major impact on your union. I think that it's really underestimated the extent to which being healthy in by mind, body, and soul is necessary to navigate the experience of twin flame union because it's a very, very intense experience to try to to embody true love. You've got to be thinking clearly. You've got to be in your physical body and you've got to know how to nourish yourself so that you actually have the energy to go through the very intense process of coming into union. Health is very important and sometimes when we don't feel good about our body, it's because our body is actually sick. Like sometimes there are underlying issues. There might be a hormonal issue, a thyroid issue. There could be any issue going on in our physical body and our bodies like our body might just be responding by looking less healthy or making us feel uncomfortable. And, you know, as some of you know, I've faced a variety of different health issues uh, right before meeting my twin flame and since meeting him. And I'll tell you what, like, If you're not feeling well, if you're not feeling healthy, you can't really be there for your union. You really have to take care of your health first so that you can be present with your twin flame. And every time that I get sick or experience health issues, I always have to step back from Zaire, step back from my twin and address those issues before moving forward. I know some people may be curious whether like negative feelings about yourself impact your twin flame or like whether if you feel poorly about yourself, your twin flame also will. In my experience, this is not necessarily the case or it's not as direct as we might think it is. So maybe you have an issue with your body. Maybe you like hate your the way your stomach looks or something like that. It doesn't mean that your twin flame is also going to hate the way that your stomach looks. This is not my experience. Um, believe it or not, like both my twin flame and I faced major, major body image issues like all throughout from the time we were little kids, like all the way until we met each other. And then when we met each other, those issues like really came to a head. And, you know, for him, the things that he sees as being the flaws like about his physical body, they are not things that I'm concerned about at all. <laughs> like I basically like I like, for example, he has an issue with his hair, like a major, major, major issue. Um, And I have no issue with it at all. Like, I think it's great. I think it's perfect. What I would say is the way that it impacts our union as it is, it like dims his light, you know? So when he's having the experience of feeling poorly about, you know, the way that he looks because of his hair or other issues, it pulls him out of the moment so much and it does make it seem that no matter how much I love him that we're not able to be in that loving space together because he's not able to receive that love and so that's that's kind of how it impacts um, the union and in my own experience My body image was the worst that I had ever been in my life when I met my twin flame. (laughs) Like when I I actually met him first online, so that was kind of fortunate. But I had just gotten very sick. I had been in the hospital. I had been actually even in a coma and just everything was messed up in my body. And I just felt 
horrible. Like I felt like the worst version of myself ever. And that was kind of telling to like what was going to be necessary to heal in order to get closer with my twin flame. Um, But right from the beginning, my body image issues that I had delayed my union in every single way. And I I don't think I'm unique in this regard. Like I think this happens to a lot of us. So, you know, we both felt the connection right away when we met online. But I was feeling really uncomfortable in my physical body. So, you know, my twin flame said at that time, like, I'd love to meet you like this week. Like, I'd love to get together this week. And, you know, the funny thing is, like, at that time, like, I probably should have met him as soon as possible because I desperately, desperately needed that feeling of being like connected. I needed to be in the presence of a soulmate. I needed to be in the presence of my twin flame. Like I needed the healing that comes from that. I literally had literally died and like very recently and come back to life. Like I needed that. But I didn't allow myself to have it because I didn't feel good enough about my body. Like, I didn't feel comfortable in my body. So instead, like, I pushed back our initial meeting by about three weeks. And then, you know, I used that time. Like, I ended up adopting, like, a paleo diet at that time and starting to exercise. And by the time that I met him, I felt comfortable enough in my physical body to at least be in my physical body and to be present and to be able to give and receive love. But what I noticed is that, you know, I was still very sick at that time and um, I was still in and out of the hospital even. And I noticed that um, as we went through, that was like in April when we actually met. And as we went through that first summer, I would notice that whenever I um, felt overwhelmed by the union, whenever I felt in any way overwhelmed by the union, my health would decline or health issues would crop up or body issues image issues would crop up like my body was like responding um and I was using it as a way to like cancel plans not see my twin um and I know in his own way that he's experienced things similar I mean and it's really surprising because I never thought that like the divine masculine would experience issues with body image um, or weight or stuff like that. Like I, I don't know, but when I was growing up and stuff, I really thought this was something that was really an issue of the divine feminine related to marketing and stuff like that. But in my case, that wasn't my experience. My twin flame and I, we treated our body unkindly a lot, especially when we were younger. And we kind of just thought, oh, it's okay if I eat this food now, I'm young, you know, whatever. I have a great metabolism. It won't affect me in the long term. Or it's okay, you know, if I take these medications or it's okay you know if I don't sleep or it's okay if I you know but one thing we both did was like we both like ran way too much um we because we just thought oh it's okay like this will never affect me and like my twin flame actually ran so much that he no longer is able to run like he actually destroyed his feet and developed I think it's called plantar fasciitis and he's not able to run anymore and he was running like from that place of self-hatred so both of us did all of these engaged in all these behaviors towards our physical body and showed our physical bodies very little respect prior to meeting each other and the thing is that it did all finally catch up with us and it all manifested as different health issues and it it really impacted our ability to connect together when we met and the one of the most important things that we have done to welcome in more love in our marriage is we've gone through that process of doing the work to cleanse our physical bodies and coming to a place where for us like food is no longer a way to cope with our sensitivity if you're an empath or you're let alone like a psychic someone who has psychic abilities you'll know that food can sometimes be a way to ground or food can be sometimes um a way to numb yourself or reward yourself or all these different types of things and exercise can be the same and it took a lot of deconstructing for us to actually we move beyond those behaviors and it took a lot of support from one another to start to realize that feeding ourselves well with whole foods, with natural foods, listening to our body was an act of self-love. And what I found is that you know, for my twin and I, it there's a huge correlation. He talks about it all the time. Like there's a huge correlation between how we feed and take care of our bodies 
and how much love we experience together in our union. And we're able to see this happen in real time. Like we're able to see this manifest in real time. Like just last week, um, my twin flame went through like a really intense week of training for a position that he's taking over the summer. And, you know, we, he was actually away, like he was staying away from home for that training. And when we reunited afterwards, he's like, first, the first thing I need you to know is that like, I, I didn't take care of my body this week. Like I ate horrible. I didn't sleep well and I feel like crap and I'm just not, like I'm probably not going to be able to um, have as good of a time with you as we otherwise would have, and so like that's how that's how direct of an impact that it has for both of us. So I think that we all know that to come into union, we need to come to a space of loving ourselves, and I don't think this is about like. I don't know like what people think loving yourself means, but I think that, you know, what it actually amounts to in the end is treating ourselves with love. It's really the actions that we take in the day to day, that they're coming from a place of love and not coming from a place of fear. And I think to come into union, we've got to figure out how do we do this like with our nutrition. And I think it can be kind of a long journey. Like what does it mean to make loving choices for what you put in your body because it's not going to look the same for everybody all the time. You know, I think that sometimes it means like, yes, choosing fruits and vegetables, but sometimes it doesn't. Like sometimes it means, you know, giving love to our body means we need that cake or we need that ice cream or whatever it is. But like we really have to come into a place where food becomes about giving nourishment to our physical bodies and feeling balanced and feeling really, really good. And I think I have a video from a while ago called like I know I have an article about it called Discovering Your Dosha, but it's about um, Ayurvedic principles and discovering your Ayurvedic body type and eating according to that diet. I think that it's a good place to start, like knowing whether you're a vata, pita, or kapha, or combination of any of those, and starting to adopt that diet. But it's about putting foods in that balance you by mind, body, and soul. Because again, if your mind is not balanced or your body is not balanced, you're not going to be able to really show up for your union. So I feel like it's of paramount importance to achieve a place where we feel like we're respecting our body in order to get into union. And if we are not respecting our body, I do think that it pushes union away. Um, But what I'm advocating for here is a real healthy, balanced approach and listening to our bodies seasonally and in the now moment to determine what's going to be healthiest for us. Uh, What I'm not advocating is like crash dieting or, you know, over exercising before you're going to see your twin or something like that. Because if what you're doing health wise is coming from a place of fear of not being enough, or if it's coming from a place of hatred, you know, like dieting because you hate yourself and you need to change yourself or stuff like that, that will not help your union. But coming to a place where like you can, you know, just breathe and you can, you know, continuously have your health choices be an act of self-care and self-love that enhances your self-image and that just helps you to feel like sort of like a loving parent to yourself. Do you know what I mean? Where it can become a sense of self-respect and self-pride and and it can bolster your self-worth. That's the type of thing that you're aiming for that will really help your union. I think it's important, like I said, to choose the pathway to health that feels right to you. After a long, long journey of healing my own physical body, I've come to understand that everybody's body need something different at different times. It really, like what your body is going to need is going to depend on where you're at and what your own history has been. It may be true that like when we are born, roughly our bodies are pretty equal, but as time goes on and we have different life experiences, we develop different imbalances in the mind, we develop different diseases, our bodies need different things to heal. So I think you really have to tune into what your body is really needing and learn to listen to what your body is needing. Like some people's bodies to heal are going to really need rest. Other people's bodies are really going to need movement. And I think, you know, just to share a little bit about my own 
experience. I knew initially that what my body needed was detoxification. I had known this because for years I had kind of been really focused on achievement in my career and my public image and, you know, university and all that stuff. And I had put like tons of toxins into my body, tons of like diet sodas, crystal light, processed foods. And the whole time I was doing it, I knew that it was not good. And I knew that like at some point um, I was going to have to do something to help my body. I never realized how much I was going to have to do, but I just, I knew when I was doing it that it wasn't right. My own journey with healing my physical body, um, it basically, I started out doing a cleanse and immediately that helped my union so much. Um, So it really began when I started doing coffee enemas. I have a video on those, but I basically did coffee enemas and I ate a basically raw vegan diet for a summer for like three months. And that really, really improved my intuition. It really improved my relationship with food. It helped me to overcome addictions to processed food. And it helped me overcome the patterns of like feeling down and sort of reaching for certain foods to raise my vibration. So it that really helped me to become more embodied. Um, but that definitely wasn't something that was going to be healthy for me to do forever. That's just what my body needed first. And then after that, like, and this could be the similar pathway for you, but it may be different for you. After that, that's when I discovered Ayurvedic principles for eating and an amazing little angel came into my life named Nisha and she taught me how to eat for my body constitution, which is Vata Pitta. And I went through about a year, yeah, like a full calendar year of following those principles, which is pretty much like a vegetarian diet um, and yeah, like eating seasonally and stuff. And that was incredible. Like that was like the most grounded that I had ever felt up until that point in my life. I had so much energy to give to my work and stuff. That's what my body needed at that time. I was learning to listen to my body and listen to the seasons and the harvest and eat, you know, seasonally and all these things. And that was real, that really helped me to understand like what food actually is and get in touch with like the human aspect of my being. So that's what it looked like, you know, after that. And then I went through a time period where I was like really called to eliminate like all the animal products and eat vegan for a long time. And eventually like that led me to just whole food, you know, vegan eating. And it's just been an unfolding journey, you know. And as some of you know, um, this winter, like I found out that I was having seizures and I solved a medical mystery, a lifelong medical mystery and found out that I was um, experiencing epilepsy. And then I had to go into a ketogenic way of eating. And that was something that has actually like had tremendous healing um on my body like I would have I would have just I would have never expected it but my point in saying this is that as we evolve we may need different things um to help us to feel grounded in our body and to feel balanced in our body um but we need to start to listen and start to let the way that we nourish ourselves the way that we exercise be a an act of self-care and self-love and self-respect and to feel we must feel good about ourselves in order to to be able to show up for our union and to even create space like in our field for our union i wanted to speak a little bit about weight gain because certainly body image issues it's not limited to issues of feeling overweight like for my twin like I said some of his body image issues don't relate to his weight at all so it could be anything for some people it may be even feeling underweight but I think for most of us when it comes to not feeling comfortable in our body it's related to maybe feeling like we're carrying extra weight and there's a common belief like in the metaphysical community that weight gain is caused by um, Uh, protection, like protecting ourselves from the outside world because of sensitivity. And I think that can often be the case because you do often see the most beautiful, beautiful, empathetic, clairsentient souls that are carrying extra weight as a way to perform a barrier, you know, to create an actual physical barrier. And I do believe in my own experience that it really does work. Like having extra weight on your body, it, it is a buffer for the energies that come to you. So sometimes I think it's, that's the case. Um, 
Um, in like Louise Hay's book, I think that she says that weight gain is caused by waiting to do things. And I believe that that can be the case um, as well for some people where um, if you're waiting to do all the things that are going to bring you joy, it creates like a stagnancy in energy, like your body builds up energy. It's waiting like for when you start to actually live your life and you start to actually do those things that you really want to do. However, I think it's really important to say that while these metaphysical um, states of being may have been the case of weight gain in the past, I think it's important to acknowledge that in this modern age, there's something totally different going on. In this modern age, like our bodies are responding in bizarre ways to the fact that we are putting things inside of them that are fundamentally not really food and that are so laden with chemicals that our body is becoming inflamed or our body is storing fat because fat is where we store toxins in our body. Our body uh, needs to like encase toxic materials in fat in order to keep our body protected from them. And so I think that in some cases, like people are overeating and stuff. It's not really because there's of anything going on at the level of the soul. Like I think for some of us, it is really because of the body is starving because the body has not had like the nutrition that it actually needs um, in order to heal itself. And so I think that if you're somebody who is facing um, feelings of being really uncomfortable in your body or body image issues, it's important to understand that in the modern context, especially in the Western world, it may not be your fault. I mean, 90% of the food in the supermarkets are created to be physically addictive and sugar is shown to be as addictive as substances like cocaine and so it's really I think that right now I think that things have really changed like and taken a tide for the worse for the entire human species when it comes to our food supply um, so I think that for many of us, the pathway to improving our body image and our feeling of being comfortable with ourselves, it may mean that we have to actually reestablish a new relationship with food and we actually have to acknowledge this extent to which it may not be our fault and yet we may still be like addicted to certain food chemicals or substances or things like that. And we have to realize like, as much as things, you know, like Oreos might be delicious or Doritos or things like that, our bodies do not recognize those things as food. And the more sensitive that your body is, the more that your body is going to respond to those things in a negative way. And I think that if you're feeding your body a lot of that, again, it depends, you know, how healthy your body is and where you're at on your journey. Um, but if you're, if you're feeding your body things like that, and you are also feeling really, really uncomfortable in your body, you probably know what you need to do, you know, to get to the place of feeling really comfortable. And I think that it first starts with forgiving ourselves for what we have been putting in our bodies in the first place. I mean, that was the case for me. Like, it was a big realization when I came to understand, like, okay, you know, like, um, from the time that I was a little girl, you know, what I was getting, the nourishment that I was getting from my parents was not not what my body um, needs, like in order to thrive. And like, it's not like, you know, these are necessarily even like our food choices are necessarily even conscious choices. Like a lot of it is subconscious and relates to our family lineage and things like that. Uh, but I just want to say, you know, if you're somebody who thinks that your issues with your physical body might be um, impacting your union, then and if you're somebody who's been wondering, like, is it worth taking the time to actually address these issues? I would say it absolutely is worth the time because if you try to jump into a lot of interaction with your twin flame or let alone like jump into like living together or something more substantial with them and you do not feel comfortable in your body, you're going to sabotage your union. Like you're going to end up in a place of separation or there's going to be issues because you're not going to be able to merge together with them in a space of intimacy in the way that you need to in 
order to harmonize your energies. And I'm not necessarily even talking about sexually. I'm just talking about in energy. Um, you've got to be there like in your physical body and you've got to to be in a place of respect for yourself if you're ever going to be able to respect your twin flame and you're ever going to be able to achieve that love because you really cannot actively love someone else in a sustainable way until you've learned to receive that love from yourself. Like you won't even know what your own love feels like until you're able to give it to yourself in the way that you live every single day. So in conclusion, I wanted to answer the question of is it necessary to love your body? And my answer to that is no. I don't think it's necessary to love your body. I don't think that you know, the Twin Flame Union, it, it is about understanding ourselves as souls. However, like we are souls experiencing this physical dimension through our physical bodies. And so you don't have to feel like you're the sexiest person in the world or something like that, or you don't have to be fully focused on your body. But I think what is necessary to come into union is that you're in your body, like that you're grounded in your body, and also that you respect your body and that you are um, taking care of your body, like that you're showing respect to this physical life that you're in, this physical vessel that you're in, that you're eating in a way that helps you to feel balanced, getting the movement that helps you connect to nature, connect to your body, um, and that you're getting the rest that you need. To get into union, we really do need to heal and balance our mind, our body, and our spirit. And so as I'm filming this, we're about an hour into summer here in the U.S. We just had the summer solstice, and I know for a lot of people, Summer can be a time where we we have the opportunity to like cleanse or focus on the health of our physical body. And anybody out there who's thinking that, you know, your relationship with your body might be influencing your love life or your union, if you feel that little spark to do whatever it is that you're being called to do to improve your health, I just want you to know that I'm encouraging you that it's worth it. Like it's absolutely worth it so that you can more fully experience like the joy of living living from within your physical body and if you take the time to heal your relationship with your body it's very very likely that it will bring you closer into union with your twin flame yes guys i hope that you've enjoyed this video and you've gotten something out of it if you have please feel free to come back any tuesday or friday for more videos here on the maya's dream channel so thank you again and namaste